Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, May 6th, 2020, Dars Highlights. Major themes covered were the significance of fasting, the verse Salamun Qawlan Mir Rabbir Rahim, a vision of the Prophet والسلام, during Taraweeh, seeing Nur with open eyes and combating oneself and clinging to the Shaykh. In commenting on the significance of fasting, the Shaykh quoted the Hadith Qudsi, where Allah Ta'ala says, fasting is mine and I reward it. The Shaykh says, fasting here is ascribed to the essence. It represents samdaniya, the quality or the attribute of divine non-dependence. Because outwardly, the one who fasts is refraining from thoughts, is refraining from the realm of other than Allah and is present with his Lord. Hence, we emphasize the importance of reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas, which contains Allah's Samad during the fast and in the evenings in Ramadan during Taraweeh. Tanqulhu Allahu Ahad Sporaqa. Because the fast is a trace of the divine attribute of Samadiyya, the attribute of divine non dependence. And when the fast is perfected, and when the one who performs the fast, connects his fast to the Lord, to his presence, then you discover the attribute of non-dependence. You discover the samdaniya of your Lord, which is why the fast is connected to Allah. It's connected to the divine essence, which is why Allah Ta'ala rewards the servants himself for the fast. And that is why there is no act that can serve as a counterpart to the fast, or that can reflect it. And so when you fast, you do not turn to your clay nature. Do not turn your attention to your earthly nature. And stay with your spirit, stay with your ruhaniya, the nature of your spirit. Stay within the garden of divine knowledge, the garden of ma'rifah. Do not cling to the gardens, the physical ones. Do not aspire to move from place to place. Do not aspire to move from one creation to another. Rather, aspire to move from the created to the creator, from the created realm to the creator of being, from the kawn to the mukawin. Fast from darkness, refrain from darkness, and discover the quality of the treasure of the inner secrets of the path. Discover the kanziya. Then you will learn intimate prayer. You will learn the quality of intimate converse with your Lord. And then the breath of the one who fasts becomes musk and the angels will race to your breath because your breath, when you learn intimate converse with your Lord, becomes a breath of the all-merciful and it attracts the angelic presence. The fast is not an easy pillar to speak of. It has no counterpart. It's a it's ascribed to the divine essence. In contrast, the other pillars, the other practices, have correlations. The zakat, the alms tax, you can speak of the levels of the nafs. Hajj, you can speak of separation in union, farq in jama'. In prayer, you can speak of the union of the imam or behind the imam. The two testimonies of faith have their significance. But samdaniya, the exclusive oneness and non-dependence of Allah is something that leaves you speechless. And so we simply say, to fast is to witness the moon, to remain in samdaniya, to remain in the quality or the attribute of divine non-dependence until that full moon disappears and it is to flow with that attribute of samdaniya through all of the attributes through all the mansions of the moon, and to fast from all directions, to fast from all mansions, to fast from all secrets deposited in the mansions or the stations of the moon. Then there was a question by a faqira from Oman that involved a dream in which she invoked Salamun Qawlan Mir Rabbir Rahim, peace, a word from a merciful Lord. She invoked it to instill peace in two girls who were in fear. And the Sheikh said, these two young girls who were in a state of fear, they are children who are close to the divine covenant. 
And so when you invoked Salamun Qawlan Mir Rabbir Rahim, the verse had an effect on these girls. Now what is this verse? Salamun Qawlan Mir Rabbir Rahim. It's the heart of the Chosen One, alayhi salatu salam. It's the heart of Al-Mustafa. He is the heart of all hearts. The heart of Surat Yasin, the heart of the Qur'an. All prophets derive their message, their revelation from or through his heart, alayhi salatu salam. Adam was taught the names from the heart of the Messenger, alayhi salatu salam. Salamun qawlan min rabbir rahim. What is salam? It is the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What is the word qawl? That is Nabi alayhi salatu salam. It's the mercy to all the worlds. Then there was a faqir from Bahrain who saw during taraweeh he had a vision of the Prophet والسلام, walking across the desert with his companions behind him. The Shaykh comments and says, Subhanallah, spirits have intimacy with spirits and this is a proof that you're on the straight path. Disclosures and visions like this show you that you are in a state of uprightness. If you have visions of lower spirits, it means that you must cleanse yourself and purify yourself through the prayers and through the invocations. Or it means that you must study the weapon of your enemy. You must observe these lower spirits and learn the movements and the weapons of the devils and of your lower self. So lowly visions are sources of knowledge or are causes to drive you to purify yourself. The Prophet ﷺ saw the inhabitants of paradise enjoying paradise and, and its delights, and he also had visions of the inhabitants of the fire being tormented and punished for their deeds. And when he saw this lowly sight, he asked about the works or the deeds that caused these inhabitants of paradise to be punished. In other words, when he saw the garden, when he saw the hellfire, he drew knowledge from that vision. Not a station. Your station with your Lord is taken from being present with your Lord, being present with the Prophet ﷺ, being present with the Nur. This is why Ibrahim ﷺ, when he sees the star, then the moon, then the sun, he says, I turn my face or I turn my attention to the one who fashioned or who created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. That is the most precious orientation. That is the supreme turning. That is the Qibla that he took. The Qibla is the one who fashioned the heavens and the earth. When he turns there, he doesn't derive sciences. Discovering the treasures of the heavens and the earth that pertains to visions, but then you turn to your Lord. In a parallel manner, when the murid sees the star, or the moon, or the sun, and he gives it importance, the Prophet ﷺ says, My companions are like stars. Whichever one you follow, you are upon the right guidance. And so, being a star, and following a star, is being counted among the ranks of the companions. To follow the star, is to be like a companion of the Messenger ﷺ. There was a question from Dagestan, from a faqira who practiced rabita, like a spiritual connection with the Sheikh. And after doing that, she opened her eyes and saw the Nur. The Sheikh comments, seeing the Nur with open eyes is a force, is a quwa that's given to you by God through which you return to God. The light teaches you not to turn your attention to the created realm. The Nurullah teaches you to become absent from the created realm because the created realm is an illusion. It's a mirage that has no ontological existence. So you have to exert more effort and plunge into this light and seek the origin, the root of that light and you will find it to be a star you will discover that the root of that light or its origin is the najm. And when you see the star, honor it, magnify it, venerate it, give it importance. 
in your heart and know that that star is the supreme knowledge. Know that it's the inner secret of the path. Acknowledge and affirm that it's the hidden treasure. Acknowledge it as your Lord, just as Ibrahim said, Hada Rabbi, this is my Lord. Do not honor and venerate the trace. Honor the transcendent meaning. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The light is greater and higher and more exalted than anything in the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth are traces. The light is the pure meaning. Cling to that. If you go and ascend through the heavens and the earth and you literally fly up and look down upon the heavens and the earth, you will be stunned by the vision, by the sight of the heavens and the earth. But the nur is higher still. The nur is greater and more precious because the nur is the reality of the heavens and the earth. And so when you see the nur, gather it, bring it together, unite it into a star. Don't let it be dispersed. Gather it in the sky of your heart until it becomes a moon. And until that moon becomes a sun by God's permission, then turn to your Lord and begin ascending in ma'rifah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamidun majid.